today's video I want to share with you the number one tomato variety that after five years of trying and testing we have found to be the best one um, don't have to water it it always produces the most super easy super early harvest late into the fall stay tuned for that Whether or not you are a farmer, or just a small homesteader, or just this hobby guy who has a couple tomato plants in the backyard, there are basically three things that are really important. One is your time. You want the time to be effective and worth it. Second, you have the plant. You want the plant to be healthy and hardy. And third, you want the harvest to be um, bountiful, plenty. So. Um, considering these three things there are a number of factors that play into this that really um, will determine if that is the case behind me you see our greenhouse and recently we had a customer visit and I told this customer that basically look at all that we do here on the farm as tests this greenhouse even though we have been growing in here and selling tomatoes for um, the past five years it's still a test because I'm constantly testing different varieties different methods different amounts of watering and so on basically my approach here is that um, I don't want to have to water um, and if I have to water absolute the bare minimum um, I want plants that will fit with that system uh, plants that won't do well with that they don't fit into my system and those plants still need to be able to um, grow and keep up with other competing varieties these plants need to be healthy and strong they need to work in the greenhouse where they grow up instead of bushy and they need to produce a delicious um, crop that also the customer loves that's pretty to look at that's easy to be transported that's easy to be stored and that's just very special and we have found this variety we believe and I'm going to share in a minute which one that is. So we have a bunch of different varieties here. Um, every year we have um, a cherry tomato and we have several other bigger tomatoes and we're just testing them out. We've had different varieties of cherry tomatoes. Here we have one variety and you can see that these leaves are curled. Um, I believe that this is due to this tomato plant wanting a bit more water than it is receiving. It's still doing really well, it's growing really well, um, fruit ha is on the bush already and it's um, not doing poorly. Now in comparison to that you have this variety here that looks absolutely 100% healthy. Um, this is about 20 to 30 centimeters taller than these other plants we were just looking at and um, there are more. there's more fruit on these already and they just when you look at them you're like wow this is how a tomato plant is supposed to look if you would be here right now and you would look at these plants and then you would go to some of our neighbors and you would look at their plants um, where they have this tiny backyard greenhouse or something you would notice that their plants are probably bigger and I've talked with several people about this you you have to look at it and see how much time they put into it how much they have watered how much fertilizer they bought um, to put there how much love and time they have given those plants um, and that might work if you have a couple tomato plants in your backyard but once you have something um, bigger then you need to really be thinking about that it needs to be scalable what you do here needs to be sustainable and profitable and worth it and effective even on a bigger scale and otherwise um, it's not really sustainable So um, what we are doing here is um, we're trying to do minimum input, maximum output. And we need to find plants, I want to find plants that work with that. Now uh, these other plants that I just mentioned, you know, if I gave them a little more time, a little more love, a little extra water, a little extra fertilizer, they might do just fine, but I don't want to do that. I want to find plants that naturally can do what I want them to do in my system. Um, we plant these 
into a deep bedding that the chickens have walked on all winter. We plant them as deep as we can, so just the top leaves look out, so that's all you see. And then we water them extremely heavy when we plant them. Um, I would say that we probably put um, two to four gallons per plant with each plant. So ten, I would say, ten to twenty liters almost, ten to fifteen liters of um, water with each plant. Now in this greenhouse there's zero millimeters, zero inches rainfall. We have to understand that this is, even though we are in Sweden, there's no rainfall right here. We have a birch tree right there behind me who, that, whose roots go all the way under the greenhouse sucking out the moisture. Um, and we don't water more than that. These plants, they, are, um, they were started in February. We planted them in here I think the end of April. And you can see um, how well they're doing, how nice they are doing. And we have not watered um, since then except for one time where we um, put a little blood meal to it because um, this year the chickens were only on here for a short time and didn't add enough fertilizer. So otherwise we haven't watered again and you can tell that this variety behind me that I mentioned earlier that's the variety that, that's doing the best. So all the work we put into this was obviously starting the plants, planting them and watering that one time and since then we just have the maintenance, the pruning, the binding up here on, a, um, on these ropes so they grow up and have their maximum um, height, maximum production, really taking advantage of the whole height of the greenhouse. Now these varieties don't do as well, which means they will not be as good for my system. Again, if you love the variety, feel free to use it. It's probably great if you water it in a little more and stuff. But if I can have a variety that's delicious, the customers love it, I love it, it grows super well, it's super hardy, no sicknesses, doesn't need to be watered and still is healthier than everything else, then that's the variety I want. This right here is the variety that the past five years has yielded an incredible crop that not only we love but also our customers love. First I have to admit though that if you were expecting a big normal sized tomato I haven't found that perfect crop there. Um, this is a bigger sized cherry tomato I'm talking about. Second let me also say I'm not talking hybrids. If you like hybrids and use them okay part for me is being able to collect my own seeds and being allowed to this variety is from the 1800s it's it's a I believe it's from the 1800s it's an old um, in Sweden considered cultural inheritance variety and it's a black sweet cherry tomato maybe many of you guys know it it's this bigger size cherry tomato that is very dark hence the name black sweet cherry it looks super fancy, super special, with, which is a big plus, a big bonus. Since it is a smaller variety, it um, starts to produce very early and it produces late into the fall. The taste is absolutely delicious. They are packed with liquid, but they are firm. They're not very mushy, they're very firm, so that's another pro. So you can come to the customer. It looks beautiful. It yields early, it yields late. Um, it is delicious, it looks very fancy, and it is this cult old cultural inheritance, this old variety. All these are points. They're not only good for you and healthy for you, but they're good for the customer should you choose to sell it. And they are the strongest and the healthiest. Year after year, we plant them at the same spot in the same greenhouse. Um, they're always the first ones to yield. They're always the ones that grow the tallest, that grow the quickest. And again, these plants have not been watered except for when we first put them in and then added a little blood meal to them. So no more additional work than just pruning them like this here and um, binding them up to these ropes. Now they are also much better than other cherry tomatoes. You have these tiny, tiny cherry tomatoes and you will stand at this bush and just pick and pick forever, not get a good kilo price. Uh, it's going to be very expensive to sell that to the customer. These cherry tomatoes are much bigger but still super tasty and sweet, still have the characteristics of a cherry tomato 
and you will stand here picking about a fourth or a fifth of the time getting the same weight and still being able to sell them really well. The first year that we grew this tomato uh, we had a big issue. When we harvested these tomatoes when they were ripe um, as soon as we took them off 90% of them they split like this and so we couldn't sell them. Uh, if you have the split it doesn't look nice um, it starts molding after a couple of days and it's just not pretty you don't want to sell this kind of product they were just so packed full of liquid and amazing that if we took them off like this they would break so what we found out is that um, these tomatoes you see they have the tomato the leaves and the stem we would put our thumbnail there and just break them off carefully like this and we would sell all of them with this green part on now um, when these are ripe, I will give you another shot of how beautiful this tomato looks. And they would never tear like this with this green part on, and they would look even prettier and fancier. So we sell these as a premium tomato. Customers love it. In regards to cherry tomatoes, we have really found this variety that is absolutely fantastic. Customers love it, they're willing to pay for it. Um, it's so beautiful in salads and so many different things. Um, people are just eating, eating them plain when they come. Um, it grows well, it's hardy, it's effective time-wise. Minimum work input, maximum output. It's really what we're looking for. We haven't found this variety among non-hybrids um, with big tomato varieties. They get a little mushy. Um, it might be our climate here as well. Maybe you have more experience. Um, share it in the comment section if you have found that variety. One of the viewers of our channel from Sweden here sent us some seeds that we're testing out this year and we're quite looking forward to testing that variety that I believe comes from Siberia, a colder climate originally. But feel free to share your thoughts and um, some other insights or ideas that you might have. Uh, thanks for watching, hope you found this helpful and I hope that you will try out this variety and just find how super delicious it is and also good for the economy on a little homestead or a farm. Bye bye.